What you're watching here today is a training exercise of a simulation of a high-rise building that's under construction on fire. That first fire engine you see arriving, that's the first due engine company. The other fire company that you see pulling in right now, that's the first due ladder company. So these two companies, their job is to go inside and do the investigation. In this clip now, what you're seeing is the second due engine company has arrived and their job is to establish a water supply. So what they've done is they've connected from the fire hydrant and that large diameter hose is going to go from the hydrant into the pumper. From there, there's going to be two fire hoses that come from the pumper and go into what's known as the fire department connection. That's the inlets that um, protrude from the building to receive the water supply so we can pump water to the higher elevations. Because right now, it's, they're going to be pumping into what's known as a manual air pressurized monitored system. And that just simply means that it's just a, a, a pipe network that's strewn throughout. It doesn't have its finishes such as um, pressure reducing valves and things of that nature are an established um, building water supply. So we're going to be doing that. And then they're stretching out the uh, supply hoses that are going to go to that fire department connection. In a short time, you're going to see the company officer is going to be at the wall plate, and he'll be uh, draining down the uh, air pressurized system. It's holding anywhere from 6 to 12 pounds of pressure. Uh, depending on the size of the building, some might need a little bit more. Some might be as high as 25 pounds. Um, but that's just there, and that's monitoring for integrity to make sure that the caps and any valves are closed and, and in place. So as they continue, and it takes them a few moments to dress up, uh, those original companies, they've already made their way over to the uh, construction hoist, and they're going to start going up. So now you can see the company officer, he's draining off the air. Um, you'll hear in the clip that it has quite a sound to it, um, but even though it is relatively low pressure. So once that air is released, now that system can receive the water and not be inhibited by it being air locked. Although there will be some air that gets forced in, through, you know, some head pressure as that those uh, supply hoses are, are filling up. So he's done, he's bled off the air, they got the connection, he's going through the list to see essentially what the next step is, and they're getting ready to what's known as charge the uh, supply hose there. Then they're, they're just checking, making sure it's flaked out, so there's no kinks, because we want to be able to make sure that all the water that's available can be utilized. So here comes the water now from the pumper. It's just coming out pretty much a street pressure right now. And then until the fire companies on the upper floors are ready for uh, higher pressurized water. And it's just some final takes, um, making sure the kinks are out. Now these are that first arriving companies. They're doing their mission now that they are going in to do that investigation. So they've gone into the hoist. They've gone up to the floor. They've recognized that they do have a fire. Now they're doing what's calling for water. So this engine company is going to be taking water off of that, what was formerly an air pressurized system. Now it's going to be water pressurized. So there's some head pressure of air that's coming ahead of that water delivery, trying to bleed that off in a controlled fashion. And the way we operate is we never connect on the floor of the confirmed fire. We'll connect our hoses one floor below. That's a safety factor. And this is the position that the members should be in. It should be low because we're expecting that fire is above them. And you can see that they've were able to uh, distribute uh, water onto the fire. Thank you for watching.